Village Scooter, and I'm George Gomez. Today we're going to be talking about the overview of the Mukulla Extruder and how it functions from its execution. So over here we have a laptop connected to the power cabinet. Within the power cabinet, you have these modules here which relay signals to the robotic system here. And so once we execute the signal using the robotic signal, it goes here. Here is the VDF, which regulates the power supply to the spindle. And the spindle is basically what regulates, what regulates the speed of the covet extruder. So here's the, the KR30, which is the Kuka robotic arm, which we're using to create the 3D printing. Over here we have the spindle, which regulates the speed of how fast it's producing the 3D uh, filaments. We also have a feed system here in which pellets are, are poured into the feed it as it's producing its 3D imaging. And here is the pellet extruder, which you can see here is the heating system at the tip. So when the feed system feeds into it, it melts it and it creates the 3D printer. Hello, we're going to talk about the spindle. The spindle is used to regulate the speed of the pellets extruded. Um, on the spindle, we have four different sensors. The first sensor is the shock con rotation control. The second sensor is the um, the total expect expulsion control. The third sensor is the total lock control, and the fourth sensor is the backwards control. Here we have the power cable, which um, sends power from the VDI. And here we have two other additional sensors for the thermal control. Um, thermal control. So what these sensors does is it lets the spindle know if it's going too fast, if it's too hot. Here we have the David cable where each sensor is integrated into it. With me, Daisy Trujillo, I'll be talking about the VFD box. So the VFD stands for Variable Frequency Drive Panel. So it pretty much controls the spindle, which will eventually make the spindle move and spin and produce more pellets. It's divided into three parts. It's um, an AC to DC converter, a DC link, and a DC to AC converter. So pretty much it will um, produce energy to control the spindle, so we will be able to control it by putting in different voltage, voltages, so we can control it to how we want it to produce our 3D printing. My name is Natalia, so here we have the cabinet. The cabinet is the brains of the operation. It is in charge of sending signals and information to the robot in order to get the spindle moving in whatever direction we want it to. Here we have the relay, which goes inside the cabinet. Um, it receives information from sensor one from the spindle, which then sends it to work visual and then through the backup modules. Lastly, we were having some issues with our robot recognizing KUKA KR30. So we decided it was best to re-image the robot. We were able to get in contact with a KUKA engineer who guided us through the process. Um, he was able to send us seven packages, which we loaded into a USB, decrypted, and later installed into the cabinet. Hello, my name is Anamel Rodriguez, and I'll be explaining the work visual, where the hardware and the software comes together. Here, we have the KRC4 controller connected to the KR30 robotic arm. At the end of this robotic arm is going to be placed a spindle, which regulates the extrusion speed. In order to control the extrusion speed, we need three modules. Two of them, this one and this one right here, are in charge to power up the sensors on the spindle. And the third one, this one right here, receives data from the sensors. The EK1100 module is going to take that information and translate it to send it to the controller. That information is vital to control and program the process.